You only get one easy chance to install this tarp, and so you'll want to make sure that you do it in the right order. What we found kind of works the best is we hold the whole tarp up and we tack the outside corners. So we just get one of them held up so everything's nice and supported on the two ends because we are dealing with a 40 foot tarp here. Then we come to the middle, we tack it, and then roll the whole tarp down and you need to let it just dangle by your feet. And so the weight of the pipe inside of the tarp will actually pull everything nice and tight. And then as you're working from the center and moving out, you wanna keep pulling the tarp tight, tight, tight so that you don't get these creases and wrinkles. It's kind of like installing a vinyl decal. If you get a wrinkle in there, it's just gonna to continue to have problems all the way to the outside. So you wanna keep it nice and tight. That's gonna make sure that when you get it all torqued up and completed and you wanna drive this thing down a highway at 120 kilometers an hour, it's not gonna be flopping in the wind and tearing. These things actually work very well. We have one right close to our shop as just a later down storage area. They're very handy because you get the full 40 foot access to a shipping container. So these roll tarp door kits, they'll come with the structural pieces. It's actually a different type of header, but because this is a hazardous material storage mod and we needed the containment pans in the container, we installed our own version of, but we've used the aluminum hoods and we've made our own, we actually have some galvanized bottom uh, threshold plates here that will actually slope back into the container. So these things, if there is a spill that even lands here, it'll go back into our containment system, which is very nice. And these aluminum hoods, they're pretty sweet as well because you can get steel or aluminum, but we don't have to paint these. So we can have the whole container painted before we start modifying. And that's what we love, especially when it's really cold out like it is now here in Canada. We have a center structural post you don't need these. You can have a temporary post that just holds the floor up during transport, but we like to leave that in there. Then we get a center hood as well, which is something we like because that'll really help the 40 foot tarp, keep it nice and tight in the middle. And you really don't get any flipping and flopping of the tarp during heavy winds or transport. So other things to note here is the ventilation. We've got the big air 45 vents with the bug screens on them. We have low ventilation on the ends and then high up on the back end wall, and that'll allow a nice cross flow ventilation along with any air that does seep around this tarp. Surprisingly airtight, like uh, you jump inside and you look for light and I mean, maybe just in the corners if you don't weld or if you don't seal it all up, you will see a little bit of air, but there ain't much there. So works all pretty good. Let's get at her. In this instance, we're actually installing an oil field skid underneath the container, which really helps the floor span that distance because the floors are weak. When you remove the entire sidewall of a shipping container, especially if you go right down to the top of the bottom channel, it is going to sag a ton. And so those I-beams underneath the shipping container really help that sag. But otherwise, a lot of people install these and they don't do that. You just gotta make sure that the whole container is basically sitting on very good uh, cribbing, dunnage, or fl a nice flat gravel pad, which isn't always the best because a lot of moisture can come up through your floorboards and cause condensation inside your shipping container. This is ultimately the best way to do it as a really expensive oil field skid, but they're really expensive. So these kits here are amazing. They're pretty low cost for what you get and they're made by a super reputable company, Mickels Industries. They're right local to us and we developed the entire kit with them together and they've taken all their experience making drain trailer tarps and drywall delivery truck tarps and they basically just applied that to a shipping container. And I worked with them on a lot of the, the structural stuff, but turned out a lot like their traditional roll tarp door kits that they use on their semis. But one important thing that I added is I made sure that it came out further. So it adds like four and a half or five inches to the container. And what that allows you to do is you can put two four foot pallets deep inside the shipping container when otherwise uh, they're seven foot, eight inches deep and you don't get two four foot pallets in there. So essentially, Having this be wider now, you've just doubled the amount of four foot totes that you can put inside of a 40 foot container. When ordering these roll tarp door kits, it's always super important to specify if you want a right or a left hand side. So that's where the end wall of your container will be, where the swing arm is, and that's yeah where everything mounts. And so there's only the side where the gearbox connects to the bottom pipe on one side of these things and you want to make sure that it's not exactly where your shipping container doors are because that'll render them useless. So here in our yard we actually use a roll tarp door for our own general storage and we have the electric the solar option. So we have a little 12 volt battery hooked up to it and we can actually show you that because in this one because there's explosion 
waterproof lighting in there. Our electrician didn't want us to hook it up. We're gonna make the customer do that. So I'm not gonna be able to really show you how it works, but I can do that on an old ugly orange container that we use. Let's go check it out. So here they are, Mickels Industries. Uh, we love these things. It's uh, all 12 volts, pretty easy to wire and do it yourself, even if you're not an electrician. Uh, if we could, we'd line our entire yard with these things. You know, basically a whole bunch of lay down area for all your materials as you're waiting for the next modification job to start. Let's try her out. So that's how that swing arm works. It goes up and down. One little flaw is you could, you gotta move your arm and, and continue on. But it's just, yeah, positive and negative, 12 volt DC motor. Interesting thing to note about these motors here is that we tried a 120 volt motor, but the, the AC current doesn't have enough torque. So a lot of times it would kick out, kick out, kick out. So the best way to get 120 volts hooked up to this is you just stick with the 12 volts, but then 120 volt charger and just charge the battery system, unfortunately. Let's see what it looks like when it gets all the way down here. So it goes underneath the footer and then back up and then it kicks out and you know you got the tarp nice and tight. And so this here, this is the tarp saver strap. So as you're traveling 120 kilometers an hour or uh, what is that, 70 some miles an hour down the highway, it helps keep the tarp from flapping. These things work surprisingly well, but if you don't install them right, you don't make sure that you start in the middle and work outwards and keep everything nice and tight, then you will get wind inside of here and then your tarp can rip a lot of times along the bottom. So just be cautious of that. Make sure you get it nice and tight, just smooth like you see here. So here it is. Uh, the last two are sending out to the customer now. They ordered four of these identical units. They're gonna have tons of hazardous material storage at their site. And once they get everything wired up here, it's gonna be super handy to access everything with these electric operated roll tarp doors. So it is on an oil field skid, which will distribute all the weight on their blocking and not make it settle funny. That's definitely a, an awesome idea when you're cutting out large wall sections such as this. One thing I wanna show you and what we learned the last time when we delivered these is we've never went super far distances, but the bottom footer of these roll tarp door kits, it's a, a folded down metal and I wish we had a hemming die where we could fold that back around and then we wouldn't be cutting the tarps, but we did on one of the deliveries. We actually cut the bottom of the tarp. So we learned our lesson. We have a whole bunch of rubber edge trim that we utilize for different things like our Ministry of Environment wildfire management, all the special shelving and racking that we build for them. So we installed that on the bottom of this and that's gonna give that rubber protection for this vinyl tarp and should have a lot better chance making it. I think this is going like 1100 kilometers, which is 660 miles or something. And uh, yeah, that's quite a distance, but these are meant to travel and they should travel because it's the same tarp that they utilize on drywall delivery trucks, gravel trucks or grain trailers. Here, actually get over here, I wanna show you. So when air gets in here and starts vibrating this tarp, it easily cuts on this sharp edge. Great that we figured it out. We lost one tarp in the making, but now we know. Put edge trim on the bottom of all this. This is the pipe that keeps the tarp nice and tight and it just rolls, keeps rolling back around, tucks under here. And yeah, it's, it's pretty tight now. So you should travel all the way down the highway at highway speeds and be fine.